Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. We're going back in with one final game with our black white control. So, without further ado, let's get into that game, and I'll see you all there. Okay, we're in, and we're going to be on the play. We have no white mana, but we don't really need any right now. We do need to hit double white, though. But with Godless Shrines now in the set, that should be okay. I think we'll lead off with this one. It's going to be fine. If we get a third land, then Compass gets our fourth, which means this Wrath and Settle is online. And if it's aggro, Fountain should gain us enough incidental life gain that makes this uh, Wrath easy enough. Ooh, okay. Alright, fair enough. We got ourselves a Khan. Our opponent's uh, a red deck of some sort with a brand new lands. I haven't actually checked out the new Ravnica lands. I should probably do that. Ah. This is either... Ah, oh, this is Burn. Well, good job we've got a pretty decent game against Burn. So long as we hit our land drops, which we are not. So, uh, <laughs> problems. Many of them. Yeah, this looks like red-black Punisher Burn. But at least we're on our starting life total now. There's a spawn of mayhem. Land, please. Hey, there we go. All right. So we're going to use Compass to grab our fourth land, and then we have Settle or Kai's Wrath open. Undecided which one I want to go with just yet. It probably doesn't make too much difference unless they play something like Judith, who will punish me for killing creatures rather than exiling them. I'd also take a massive hit as well. Fireblade Artist. Okay. Well, that's a hasty threat. It looks like Kaya's Wrath is in the book, though. Skew the critics. Okay. <laughs> All the new cards! Look at that. Beautiful. Is Mountain new? Was that something that just came in the set? We're at six, by the way, uh, guys. I don't know if you'd noticed. But uh, we should be okay. I mean, <laughs> we're going to be gaining a little bit of life here and there. We're going to be wrathing this board right away. No questions asked. And our opponent has to pick up the pieces from here. They've got another spawn of mayhem. Okay. Kind of cancels out our Fountain of Renewal. Uh, let's see. So we could compass, get a land, play the land, play Dawn of Hope. Or I could hold up and settle the wreckage, which is probably a good idea. Alternatively, I could play Khan, because I don't think I'm going to... We'll be at seven. Yeah, we could actually just die next turn. So I'm going to play the land and I'm going to pass, hold up and this settle. Because this ping here takes me to seven, then there's another four here, so really doesn't need to make up too much damage there at that point. Okay, um, I am going to have to settle this. It's just too much damage at this uh, stage in the game. Which is really rough. I'm really hoping that Fountain of Renewal, though, stabilizes it enough so that Dawn of Hope can come down and make some life gain. And another Fountain is really solid. So we're at 3, 6, 1 land off of Compass Mana. So I guess I could just go Compass, grab a land, play Dawn of Hope, and be happy with that. See if we survive. We should be just okay. We're going to go down to seven. I don't think there's much that two cards could do. Yeah, that's just one damage. It's a lot, but it's something that Dawn of Hope can help with. And then we're going to gain two here. I think we draw. We have two thematic compasses that are going to flip. Um, yeah, let's, let's draw a bit more. And get out of that really wonderful land pocket there. Okay, so I could play a Godless Shrine tapped here, and then the compasses are going to flip. And I could make a Dawn of Hope token if I wanted, but the likelihood is that I want a war boss. Send him back to where he belongs. Which is in defense position. And then anywhere he's mentoring shouldn't matter too much. Rakdos Firewheeler. Ender's Battlefield deals 2 damage to a target opponent and a creature or a planeswalker. Cool. That's a new one. 
So that's one of the uh, double X, double Y dudes. He's okay. He's reasonable. Down to six. And no further damage. Really, other than the token, of course. So we're taking two here, and then we're gaining two. So I want to untap the one that he's just mentored, and untap the war boss, and just take two. Really do need another wrath, though. So I guess we'll go digging for that off of these fountain triggers. There's Eldest Reborn. That's not going to cut it. It's not for this matchup, unfortunately. And if Raska's Contempt is... Ah, there we go. Settle the wreckage. Raska's Contempt isn't terrible. It can help with take care of the war boss so they don't get an additional creature. But the likelihood is, because I've got two spires, they're going to all attack here. And I can get some decent Settle the Wreckage value. So I think I'll just pass. Runaway Steamkin. Okay. If they don't all attack, then I've got double spires and a Vraska's Contempt. And they all attacked. Alright. That's uh, effectively GG. Goodbye, board state. They're going to have loads of lands, which means they're going to have plenty of nut draws off the top, unfortunately, but... I think the situation that they find themselves in now is not a good one when we're getting two life a turn and drawing three cards per turn if we want to, which we absolutely do. Because I want to find my moment of cravings. And my fountain of renewals are also very good. Game one down. All right. That's Rakdos Agra destroyed. In games two and three, we have a fair few things. Moment of cravings as the extra life gain. Uh, right now... It seems that basically the entire meta is aggro, so we want to be dealing with that. We could also duress to take out things like Skewer the Critics and Light Up the Stage. Though I think he's more creature focused, so I'm not really going to go with that. And I feel like I should have Dawn of Hope over something like Khan. Also, Kaya, other than Risk Factor, I don't think she's ever going to tick up on anything. But she does have life gain on a tick up as well, and the non land permanent with converted mana cost one or less is kind of relevant. You can kill tokens, can kill uh, lava runners, things like that. So she actually does have a little bit of value, though I wouldn't say she has the greatest amount. We definitely want to go down the Eldest Reborns. They are way too expensive for the value we'd get off of them. And I think a Khan should also come down as well. Just go a full removal suite and try it like that. We're probably going to win with Dawn of Hope in this particular instance, because it is life gain focused. So yeah, let's go. Okay, we have a turn one fountain and a mortify. Ah. Uh, I think I can take this turn three to the Mortify with Fountain of Renewal gaining us some life every now and then. We could probably stabilize with this. We've got four uh, Dawn of Hopes as well, so we should find those to combo with our Fountains pretty soon. And there's a Kaya's Wrath, so I think we should be all good. Runaway Steam Kim. Yep. Gain a life, undo our opponent's move, and tap land and a second fountain. Really good. They could run Bedevil, which does take care of uh, artifacts. Though I think it's double black and not double red, right? Still trying to get used to uh, all of the cards. Which is a little downside on uh, playing control in the early game of uh, a new set release. Though I think I can... I can get it covered. Alright, so the option is the, to mortify the Steamkin so that we're only taking three a turn and gaining two. Or we could go for the treasure map to set up our top decks. But we would likely be taking four, maybe five, depending on how much the Steamkin ends up doing. I think because one spell ends up generating him three mana, we should kill the Steamkin now. It's a big threat, it's a lot of life, and we should really protect our life total. It, you should, you'd be surprised on how much... Oh my god, they've had enough. You'd be surprised on how much a red deck can push out damage these days now that they've got a new lightning bolt in the format. It's uh, pretty ridiculous. But yeah, 
I guess since this was uh, such a short game, let's go for another one. So I'll see you in the next game. Okay, we're in and we're going to be on the play. We have turn one fountain with some mortifies. Uh, Mort fountain's pretty good against an aggro matchup. Mortifies can hit search for a scanter in a control matchup. Yeah, we'll keep this. Not knowing what our opponent's playing, I think this hand is fine. So let's just lead off with the fountain. Got kind of the best of both worlds, depending on the matchup. It's a blue deck. Alright. So, I mean, it's just going to be Godless Shrine tapped to play a fountain. I don't know if the life gain is going to be entirely relevant. If this is, like, mono blue tempo, then it is. This is going to be a really good matchup for us if it's mono blue tempo. Blue, black. Eh, do me a discard. Dumps a tube. Alright. So, I mean, it's a different construction, but it's the same rough game. We are probably going to win it. As long as we can get ourselves a Donner Hope, anyway. So, opponent unlikely to play Disinformation Campaign, because we can just mortify it immediately. So, I'm guessing that they're just planning to hold up and counter spells. And we'll just make keep making land drops and gaining life if they do that. They're not really in a position to wait on us. Opponent plays a land into Night Veil vale Predator. Okay, well that's going to need a board wipe, unfortunately. Well, now it isn't. <laughs> now we're gaining exactly the same amount of life as he's taking away. So, Night Veil vale Predator no longer an issue. Opponent plays a land, swings. I'm assuming they're going to do nothing. Because Night Veil vale was all they did last time, so I'm assuming it was a top deck, and indeed, seems to be the case. So we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we get one permanent to play, eh, we'll try it. If this resolves, we get the city's blessing. We also win. Yeah, I figured that would be the case. I didn't really want to play around that though, because if we hold too many cards that they don't know about, they're just going to Thought Erasure us anyway. So that's one Donna Hup down, there's two left in the deck. We're under no pressure whatsoever. And if they play a creature, we might just mortify it. They know about it, so any of their big creatures are not going to be a target here. It's likely to be just something that's a little pathetic. Let's play Khan. Khan resolves immediately and gains us the city's blessing. So now we're drawing two cards a turn. Looks like we're making a land drop as well. Yep, yeah, uh, we will shock this in, I think. I don't mind paying the two life. And it threatens the Mortify again, so they can't play anything down and even protect it for a turn. Eldest Reborn, sure. Kill Eldest. So we lose our Khan. Our opponent doesn't get our Khan. And we're back in the same exact position, not losing life, not progressing this game. That's what Demir loves to do. Alright, the only difference is, we now have an Archer of Araska that can play around discard effects. So they can Thought Erasure this cast down that's doing nothing in our hand all they want. Hmm. If they have discard effects, this is a terrible play because they should really check what this card is in hand. We're representing Settle the Wreckage and this is their only threat. And now we have the cast down available. So, I think we might take it. We could also go with the Arch Veraska plan, which might actually just be better. Drawing cards and being more mana efficient this turn, I think, is better. The Matic Compass. Alright. So, I think we'll lead off with that. That might take a counter out. It'll also let us know if they have one in hand, if there's any delay. Oh, wow. This is the best combination of three cards I've ever seen. So, Compass is the most likely... 
to uh, be fine resolving. Okay, that resolved. So now we'll try kill Thief of Sanity. We have the compass that's going to flip anyway. So countering the cast down on the Thief was not going to make any difference. And now we get the Donna Hub. We're the compass flip. Which isn't worth anything really, but... It's nice to have right now, I suppose. Opponent Chemistus. This is more like Tempo, Demir. It's putting down the blue-black creatures rather than trying to make us discard a lot. Which they won't be able to do very effectively anymore. We'll be drawing four cards every turn. If we choose to. And we're still at 25. And we've been going quite a fair bit through our deck. So, that land drop in your hand, opponent. Yeah, I'm gonna make it. Alrighty then. So, fountain, fountain, fountain. Let's draw. Use our colorless first. We're not likely to be using arch here, so... Let's just make sure our mana's the pretty good. And we're getting loads of lands. Which is fine, I suppose. Yeah, okay. So we have a little bit of a discard buffer here. I don't really mind losing both of these cards anyway, so if they want a Thought Erasure, as they absolutely can, and they will get value from it. But it's not, like, top-tier value. This represents, like, a scry in a card drawer, and we're already drawing far too many cards anyway. So, it's just a matter of when our opponent wants to scoop. <laughs> this game is over. Come on now. Sooner they realize that, sooner we can go on to games two and three. Oh, it will be a game three. We'll win games two. Alright. How do I know that? Mostly because Demir is very overrated. It, uh, it wins games because there are a lot of decks that like card advantage. This one doesn't really care for it. Any deck that usually has Dawn of Hope and the Fountain combo in can get along just fine with empty hands. Also treasure maps as well. You have any combination of these then blue-black is going to have a little bit of a tough time. Because they can't handle any kind of card advantage whatsoever, from my experience. Uh, settle the wreckage, yeah, we'll take it. We'll take care of the Night Veil Predator. Not that I really even care if we have to take care of it. Same again, though. We are going to tap our colors first. There's our settle. And we'll draw this one. And we'll pass on this next one. Drop the turn. It's a Vraska's Contempt. Okay, so we can afford to make our land drop this turn. I don't really care about losing the treasure map. The Vraska's Contempt's not doing much right now. But it will have a target eventually. Doom Whisperers, Eldest Reborns, getting back my Khan. All of that, no, all of that sort. If our opponent does absolutely nothing and we decide that we want to go to the Dawn of Hope plan, that's also pretty good. I imagine our ha opponent's hand is full of creature removal, since they are trying to tempo the us out. They don't seem overly focused on all of the exile effects. Alright, so in this instance, because they have two Predators, I'm not sure I want to settle them just yet. So I think I'll pass. It also lets them know that I might not have Settle, and I might have just been holding the mana open for the Dawn of Hope. So, let's use Treasure Map. Vraska's Contempt can go to the bottom. One effect is just fine. And we're now drawing like a boss. Let's tap our Colorless. we got a land. Cool. Let's draw again. More lands. More fodder. And... I think what we'll do, hmm, if we hold open exactly four, it could be suspicious to our opponent. So because I don't really need extra cards, ooh, Kai's Wrath. We could just go for the Wrath. So swing in with the token, see if they want to tap out with a removal spell. They've had so many removal spells going into their graveyard. 
that uh, they might just use something like a moment of craving here just to stop us drawing cards. And in which case, they drop their Sinister Sabotage and then lose both their Predators. But because that is a risk, they might want to reconsider and let us draw an extra card. Yeah. So, they realize they can just get away with the block here. That's fine for us. A Mortify. That is going to be useful. Uh, I think I will just go with the Kai's Wrath here. They can Sinister Sabotage and then we'll settle them the following turn. If they don't counter this, if they do, then we have to do that. There shouldn't be much thinking about this one. That's six power on board. They're finally dealing damage. They're getting three points in every turn, guys. Three points. All it took them was getting halfway through their deck. Countering this is 100% what you do. There you go. All right. They got it. And we'll try to go for the Settle the Wreckage. Sinister Sabotage, usually the only counter spell we have to worry about, and that's two of four. They're halfway through their deck, so there is a chance that they do have third or fourth uh, Sabotage in their deck. But when we're taking three points a turn, it's not going to be the end of the world if we don't get the Settle the Wreckage off. We have five board wipes in the deck to deal with this. And two of them are in our hand right now. Oh were in our hand. Eventually I can just make enough Donna Hope tokens to counter that other three. So let's do a little bit of catch up I think. I don't think I want to use the treasure curve to draw cards anymore. Mostly because the tokens will represent construct tokens instead. I want some really big space marines will be making seven sevens right now. And if I don't have to use the treasures to draw, I absolutely will not. So, we have another Khan, but that could just be another Eldest Reborn. I think we'll just draw one more card and leave it at that. I don't want to draw too much into my deck. If the previous Demir game was anything to go by, we could be going for the mill plan. Just preying on our opponent, doing absolutely nothing. This would be a terrible counter. So, yeah, that's smart enough not to do it. Because if they've noticed that these treasure maps have not even been cracking them, so all it's really doing is generating me three treasures. Thought Erasure. Sure. They can take this out of the wreckage. Yep, it's the only target. So we're still taking three a turn. However, we are generating two tokens as it currently stands, if we want to. Our opponent, with the double swing, will mean that we'll get that swing back through and keep our token, most likely. Or it'll eat a removal spell, which is also fine. Down to 17. And, yeah, let's just make some tokens. I think I will eat a treasure here, just to make another Donna Hope token. As long as we can go back up to our starting life total, there's really nothing to worry about. And Khan is likely to just get um, Eldest Reborn. Though if I make some tokens, then he's a little bit protected from that. But then, of course, Vraska's Contempt is still very much a card that I have to concern myself with. So, it basically says, our opponent needs a Sinister Sabotage or a Vraska's Contempt, otherwise Khan's going to do some disgusting stuff. I don't even really mind him dying to a Night Veil Predator. If it leaves us with a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7. Seven, seven. Opponent finally lets us play. And we start doing some scrying and some drawing. Let's find ourselves a board wipe, shall we? Kaya's Wrath is the one I'm looking for. So they know the entire contents of this hand at this point. <laughs> another fountain. I could take another fountain. Won't be against it. Yeah, sure, why not? Take another fountain, that means we're taking two damage a turn. And now we're gaining two back. So, draw, draw. Keep drawing. 27 to their 25. As long as I'm behind them, 
uh, in terms of the size of my deck, it is completely fine to make any kind of draws, so... That's basically what we're going for. And we will decline this one. I do not need it. So I wonder if they're running Ritual of Soot. We know they're running Cry of the Carnarium. They might have a Ritual on the top end, otherwise they might be just re um, relying on hard cast removal for the big top end stuff. They've certainly teched against aggro, which we are very far from. Oh, oh, we get to play. Alright, decline. And we will draw for the turn. It's a land. Okay, so make a land drop. Play Fountain. Taking two damage a turn. Gaining the two from our Dawn of Hope tokens. And it's about time now that we just start making Dawn of Hope tokens until the end of time. Which will allow us to keep up with these Predator beats. And start beating down our opponent. And eventually they'll have to play something to block. Or they'll start having to hold back Night Veil Predator. And in which case we'll start gaining life rather than losing it. And if we're doing that, then our opponent cannot win. Because they are a damage based deck. Alright. So we have the mana now. <laughs> we have the mana now to make two more tokens. And our opponent realises that they can't win this matchup. Which is very smart to realise. Okay. Um, the mana compasses were pretty dead there. However, we know they're running Ravenous Chupacabra. So the Thief of Sanity is also useful. They've got Doom Whisperers and maybe Dream Eaters. That's what I'm looking to say. Uh, Ixalan's Bindings are probably not that great. We could use Duresses to take their discard spells, but we don't really care if they are discarding. I could bring in Kaya in this matchup. She would eat away at the Graveyard, which is Eldest Reborn fodder. And I think we'll definitely go down the Karns and we'll just go with the Donna Hope plan. Maybe leave in one Karn because of the chance of unmoored ego. We definitely want at least one alternative win con to the Dawn of Hope. Uh, but the likelihood is that I'm going to be looking for a hand that's got both of these in it anyway, so one should hopefully be on the, in the, on the board at some point. I'm going to try Kyra in this matchup. I don't think she's like blow away kind of good, but it is obviously another alternative win con. Um, and we just need things to go in the deck. Uh, History of Banalia is an option as well, just to get that early game beat. Moment of Craving could be good, but I think cast downs are just a little bit better. So we'll go down the Moment of Cravings, go up a cast down, and stick some Banalias in, I guess. Anything else that's bad. Settles iffy, but we don't really have a better board wipe, and we are going to need board wipes against Night Vale Predator. So, yeah, let's just try it like this. Eldest Reborn can also take care of them as well. Let's go with this. Alright, so we're in. We're on the draw, so there is a chance that this hand gets disrupted, but it is a solid hand nonetheless. We have the turn 2 Donna Hook combo, and we have alternative turn 2 players should we get duressed or thought erasured, so we're absolutely going to go with this one. Opponent already going down 6 cards, bodes well for us. They might have mulliganed aggressively for the thought erasure though, so we'll have to see. So let's just go land, fountain. Do you have the Thought Erasure? No, you don't. <laughs> you either don't have the Thought Erasure, or you've gone to the toilet. Or your mum's calling you. I'm not sure. Either one. Oh, he's returned. His mum said he could have five more minutes before bed. Swamp. Into Discovery. Alright, so Donna Hope coming down. It's alright, dude. I'll make this quick. Oh, no, I won't. I absolutely will not. That's a lie. Ooh, Kaya. Cool. Get her down really nice and early. That's going to be fun. All right. So we can get her down next turn to start eating away at the graveyard. Doesn't do a great deal. Uh, we have two cards in the graveyard and no creatures. There's no life gain on the tick up. But still fun nonetheless. Thief of Sanity. All right. That's awkward. I think we need to decline this draw 
to try and find removal, and we didn't quite find it. Though, what I could do is get down Kaya, which maybe encourages the Thief of Sanity to head towards Kaya instead. So, Thief actually has to hit players in order to start exiling cards. We do have the Eldest Reborn on 5, but that's going to be 2 hits from the Thief before that ends up uh, slamming down. And by then, they might just have the counter spell. Around this time, I think they start running um, the big stuff, the Disdainful Strokes, over their Sinister Sabotages as well. Maybe our opponent has Swamp into Contempt. Ooh, this looks like the best outcome. No, okay. They've realised that Kai is not doing anything. And very smartly attacked our face instead. For the Thief of Sanity uh, attempt. We do have a lot in here to deal with Planeswalkers. So they could find it. Well, they only had the choice between that card and two lands. And they can't play lands, so... Probably didn't get anything good there. There's Night Vale Predator, so now we don't have the Eldest Reborn target. So in that case, we could draw Vraska's Contempt. Or we could draw Cast Down. I could do two draws to find Cast Down. But Contempt is just as likely to be drawn off the top, so... It's a Mortify, actually. So that's pretty good. So Mortify on Thief of Sunny. That worked out. Play a land, tick up, and steal your thief. Gaining a bit of life. And Predator will deal with Kaya in no time at all. Unless we draw a land and then we can Eldest Reborn the uh, Night Veil vale Predator. Duress. Okay. Takes the Eldest Reborn. Fair enough. And Night Veil vale Predator is not terribly scary anyway, so this basically just opens me up to draw with Donna Hope and then play one of these cards. Treasure map. I believe that one is mine. Yep. That's the one he got from my exile. Fair enough. You get some scrying. Not going at Kaya. Fair enough. Well, she does have an ultimate that makes you lose life and me gain life. It's not terribly powerful, but it's there nonetheless and it's ready to go. Alright, so we'll draw for the turn. Kaya's Wrath is good. And Treasure Map is fine. So, take your Duress. And I think we just got Treasure Map. We could do Compass and then on our... If we drew a land off of the Dawn Hope Triggers... And our draw for the turn, we could then crack and grab compass as well. But I think treasure map is just as likely to do that kind of thing, and it ramps us up eventually anyway. So, we'll go with that plan. Alright, let's see if they have land Eldest Reborn. They didn't do an upkeep stop, so that's a good sign. Maybe they just made a mistake. That wouldn't be the first time playing against me is the biggest mistake of all. <laughs> no. Um, they probably just forgot. Going at Kaya. Alright. She's bought some time. Do better than that. We definitely will draw for the turn, but we will scry first as well. I'm just looking for a land, honestly. A land is fine. If I find one, I might just go for the Kaya's Wrath because my opponent has no pressure on me. So Vraska's Contempt, I will bottom it. Doesn't seem terribly useful. By the time Thief of Sanity is a problem again, we'll probably have a flipped compass, or we'll be working towards it at the very least. So I am going to draw a card here. So if we draw a land, we can get compass or map down. We can tick up Kaya, so she's going to last the turn. And if he is holding up Sinister Sabotage, then absolutely anything that we play here is perfectly fine as a counter option. So we've got our land. Very nice. We even got a spare. So let's just go spare. Tick up. Uh, it really doesn't matter what we eat here. This is our graveyard for the record. 
Um, I don't think there's any value in us eating anything. But I suppose you never know. Let's just eat the useful cards out. <laughs> On the off chance our opponent can do something. Which is very unlikely. Uh, I think we'll play the compass. Yeah, let's play the compass. We're close to flipping it. Flip treasure map and a land drop will do it. Opponent in a tank. What could they have at three mana that really takes thought? An opt? <laughs> I really don't know. Hmm. Maybe they have a uh, creature removal still. They could target their own predator. That would hold priority. So they're about to flip treasure map unless we find a mortify. I don't know if I care if they flip it. They've already shown that they're very low pressure anyway, so those extra draws just not going to make any difference. Goodbye. They realize they can't win. Okay. So we are insanely favoured in that matchup. The only exception, of course, is if our opponent does end up having the absolute nut draw, which any deck that gets their nut draw is probably going to win anyway. But blue-black is a wonderful, wonderful matchup for us, as is quite a lot of aggro in the deck. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, then be sure to like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon, all that jazz. If you want to see another matchup with this one as well, I do offer a fourth video for Twitch subscribers and Patreon supporters. So if you are either one of those, or you might want to be as part of supporting the channel, it's completely optional, but I do offer rewards. I also have a Discord where you can go check out all that stuff as well. So completely free to join. So go ahead and do that. Link is in the description. Thanks very much for watching anyway, guys, and I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully, for a brand new deck. So stay tuned for that.